Hello everyone and welcome to Sam Moxie DB where we are launching the emergency rescue mission for ETS 10A, the mission with the new shuttle Libertina that disintegrated in the previous launch from the EDB. We are T minus 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, engine ignition, and lift off, lift off of rescue NR02. The EDB has decided to create a unified designation for all rescue missions. NR signifies that the launcher is non-recoverable. The, uh, the first zero is indicating that there are no crew on board on the way up. And then the two, the second digit, indicates how many Kerbals need to be rescued. An additional suffix will be added if the Kerbals have to be rescued away from low Kerbin orbit. Because the EDB wanted to get this mission underway as quickly as possible to see the Kerbals recovered safely before Christmas, the launcher had to be put together with whatever was lying around the KSC, and so a very simple design resulted for the launcher itself. The rescue pod is a bit more complicated, so there we have the first stage separate- oh dear, well, it looks like the poodle is safe. So the first stage had a skipper and four thuds and again non-recoverable there goes the fairing and there you can see the rescue pod it has a two lander cans and at its base it has uh, six of the Rockamax 48 7s and so those are the engines being used for the rescue pod actually it has more fuel than is necessary altogether in fact the poodle stage could probably get it to the target but a lot of redundancy was built into the system just in case. There you see it moving into a higher orbit to allow the ETS-10A to catch up. And of course ETS-10A is simply a cockpit and a docking port and uh, some thrusters basically right now. Here the fuel cells are being activated on the rescue pod. The rescue pod only has drogue chutes as it is making its maneuver to uh, rendezvous here. It does not have main chutes, it will use its Rockmax 48.7s to create a soft touchdown. Okay, there we are, uh, entering the proximity of ETS-10A and approaching. The rescue pod made good time, as you can see it is only one hour into its mission, and already approaching its target. The shuttle has control still and power, and so it spun around to face the rescue pod with uh, Crescenta and Donnelly waiting for their for their return to the surface. It's worth noting that if ETS-10A had been successful in its mission, they would still have been returning prior to Christmas, and so that was, that was the intention behind all of this. Um, of course, even if they had not been intended to return before Christmas, the EDB would want to get them back to their families so their families wouldn't have to worry prior to Christmas given the circumstances. Okay, we have a successful docking and transfer of Donnelly Kerman and Crescenta Kerman to the, to the rescue pod's two lander cans. Since the rescue pod has a grip on the shuttle cockpit and has the poodle engine to work with, Mission Control decided to deorbit the cockpit to reduce the amount of debris. Already, the shuttle has produced quite a lot of debris in low Kerman orbit, and so anything we can do to reduce that would be positive, and so here it goes bringing the orbit of the cockpit down. This is not the re-entry trajectory that, that the rescue pod will use. It undocked from the remains of the shuttle, which is now on a very dangerous trajectory, and then proceeded to make orbit itself, a standard 100 km by 100 km orbit here, and it got to burn away from the shuttle, which is, which is lucky. Donnelly Kerman in command, of course, uh, our pilot on board, Crescenta being the engineer. And so there you go, the rescue pod on a safe apoapsis, and it's circularized, waiting for the KSC to be on the daylight side of Kerbin. At that point, it did its own retro burn, first to uh, drop off the poodle into uh, a fiery descent, and so a lot lower than the normal re-entry descent. It decoupled the poodle, which is now going to burn up in the atmosphere, and then the pod was on its own. And there we go, the 48.7S is finally getting some work 
after uh, sidestepping the poodle stage. The scent uh, was set to about 30 kilometers periapsis and we're not entirely sure what the aerodynamics of this pod will be. You can see the heat shield tucked between the six engines protecting the center portion and of course the lander cans themselves. Here at uh, 46 kilometers starting over the western ocean. There you can see the trajectory is somewhat inclined for some reason. We were left in uh, inclined trajectory so not quite able to hit the KSC at this point especially since it would be dangerous to turn the pod during this phase of re-entry. Here now approaching the western coast of the home continent. Everything looking well, no overheating indicators evident. Unfortunately, trajectory as noted heading north. Donnelly Kerman decided to run the engines to lighten the load. Clearly this rescue pod uh, could be suitable for missions well beyond low Kerman orbit, perhaps the moon or Minmus as well. It was always designed to uh, perhaps make a soft touchdown at the KSC, but right now there's no opportunity to maneuver. The inclination change would have to have been done uh, perhaps after the Poodle stage was Oh wait, uh, Donnelly Kerman seems to be attempting to maneuver it towards the KSC, but uh, first of all he went the wrong way, and second of all it looks like the center of mass and center of lift qualities of this particular vehicle uh, has it pointing nose first right now. That maneuver was inadvisable, but uh, should not cause any, any life-threatening situation for the Kerbals. In any case, uh, yes, uh, perhaps with the Poodle engine or after the Poodle engine was separated, this pod could have corrected the inclination in order to hit the KSC directly. For now, it will attempt to at least get to the same longitude, given that it is at a different latitude. There we have the drogue chutes deployed, four of them. The use of drogue chutes plus these Rockmax 487S's was simply due to the fact that they were the, the parts that were immediately available at the KSC. The standard parachutes would not have been prepared in time. But looking good so far, with the mountains in the background, the drogue chutes fully open, bringing the pod to about 40 meters per second, necessitating the use of the thrusters to make a soft landing. Donnelly uh, still still a rookie, this was his first uh, space flight, he will be getting his astronaut wings after this, or Kerbinaut wings, and uh, it looks like a bit of too much sideways motion there, and in fact uh, a, a tip over on touchdown, but nothing dangerous. And the Kerbals have returned back to Kerbin, close enough to the KSC so they can be picked up in good time to meet with their families and have a good Christmas. Uh, and so on that note, a successful rescue of these two Kerbals from ETS-10A and hopefully, hopefully uh, lessons learned for the next development of the shuttle. The shuttle itself uh, is still considered to be a good quality vehicle. It's just a matter of um, making sure the joints are all right. Uh, hopefully, no crackings will strike on a future launch, but we'll have to see. And on that note, thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this coverage of the rescue of Christina and Donnelly. And if you did, please do press like. If you have any comments and suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time.